Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Getting Started with Rodian Schwartz HMP Power Supplies. This presentation explains how to configure and use the HMP series power supplies, including both basic and advanced functions. HMP series power supplies are available in two, three, or four channel models. Both the two channel HMP 2020 and the three channel HMP 2030 have a total output power of 188 watts and provide up to 32 volts and 5 or 10 amps per channel. The HMP 4000 series are either 3 or 4 channel supplies with 32 volts and 10 amps per channel and a total of 384 watts of output power. We'll be using an HMP 4040 in this presentation, but the functions and methods of operation are the same or similar for all models. In addition to over voltage and over current protection, additional HMP features include arbitrary waveforms, remote sensing, and remote control. In the remainder of this presentation, we'll explain and provide step-by-step -step instructions for all of the HMP functions. On the front of the HMP, connections are made using pluggable banana-style connectors. Connections can also be made on the rear of the instrument at the provided terminal block, with the plus and minus terminals being used for output, and the S terminals for so-called sense connections, something we'll cover later in this presentation. Note that for each channel, only one set of connections should be used at a time. To enter the output voltage and current limit for each channel, first press the corresponding channel hard key, and then either the voltage or current hard keys. Values can be entered using the rotary knob and cursor keys, or by using the numeric keypad. The C key can be used to backspace. Either press the knob or use the enter key to confirm values. To activate output on all active or illuminated channels, press the output key. Channels can be individually activated or deactivated by using their channel keys. The HMP display shows the output voltage, output current, and output power updated in real time. The color of the channel keys shows the operating mode for each channel. Blue means the channel is in editing mode. Green indicates that the channel is operating in constant voltage mode and red indicates constant current mode. Let's stop for a moment to explain what we mean by constant voltage and constant current. Normally, the user of a power supply configures a fixed output voltage. In this case, the output current depends on the load resistance, as per Ohm's law. This is called constant voltage mode because the supply will hold the voltage constant even if the load resistance and current change. A potential problem is that if the load resistance decreases, the amount of current supplied will increase. A large drop in load resistance, therefore, can lead to current that is high enough to cause damage. One solution to this problem is an electronic fuse that turns power off when maximum current is reached. Instead of disabling the output entirely, another solution is to limit the current to a maximum value by decreasing the output voltage. In this case, the supply is operating in constant current mode. Whether a power supply is operating in constant voltage or constant current mode is determined by the user-specified output current limit. There's no button or toggle between these two modes. Let's look at an example of this on the HMP. We configure the output voltage to be 6 volts and enter a current value of 400 milliamps. After enabling the output, the HMP will hold the output voltage steady or constant at 6 volts even if the current changes, as long as the current remains below the configured threshold of 400 milliamps. Since we're in constant voltage mode, the channel key will be lighted in green. Now we decrease the current limit from 400 milliamps to 300 milliamps. The output voltage still starts out at 6 volts and remains constant during current changes as long as the limit of 300 milliamps is not exceeded. If, however, the load resistance decreases to the point where more than 300 milliamps would be drawn, the HMP automatically switches to constant current mode and lowers the output voltage until the output current falls below the configured limit. When operating in constant current mode, the channel key will change color to red. Next, let's talk a little bit more about the HMP outputs. The HMP outputs are floating and galvanically isolated. Floating means that the outputs are not referenced to earth ground, and galvanically isolated means there's no connection between the outputs. In other words, 
the channels of an HMP can be treated as separate and independent power supplies. This makes it possible to connect channel outputs in series or parallel. By connecting the outputs in series, the HMP can provide higher voltages than would be possible with a single channel. And, by connecting them in parallel, higher currents are supported. For example, we can combine four 32 volt channels in series to get an output voltage of 128 volts. Or, we can combine four 10 amp channels in parallel for a combined output current of up to 40 amps. Whether channels are used individually or combined, it's important to protect against excessive current. Overcurrent protection is provided on the HMP in the form of an electronic fuse that protects sensitive outputs from high currents. These fuses are configured per channel with user-defined current and delay. If the fuse is activated, output is disabled and a flashing fuse indicator is shown in the display. After a fuse has been activated, the output must be manually restarted. It's also possible to link fuses together. That is, if the fuse is tripped on one channel, all linked channels are disabled. To configure fuse linking, simply use the rotary knob to select a channel, then select which channel should be linked to that channel. In this example, we've selected channel 3, and then channels 1 and 4. So, if the fuse is activated on channel 3, this will disable output on channels 1 and 4 as well. For fuse delay, simply select the channel and configure the delay in milliseconds. Values can range from 0 to 250 milliseconds. Finally, to activate the fuse, press the fuse key on the front panel and then select the channel key to activate the fuse. The word fuse will be shown in the display. To deactivate the fuse, simply repeat the same procedure. Remember that if the fuse is tripped, the output must be manually reactivated. Another type of protection supported on the HMP is over voltage protection, which protects sensitive outputs from high voltages. Like over current protection, over voltage protection is also configured on a per channel basis. When over voltage protection is activated, the output is disabled and a flashing OVP indicator is shown in the channel. There are two options when configuring the over voltage protection. Measured activates the protection when the measured voltage value exceeds the threshold, and protection prevents the user from configuring a voltage value above a defined threshold. Now that we've covered the basic functions of the HMP, let's look at some of the more advanced functions. These include tracking, arbitrary waveforms, remote sense, and remote interfacing or control. The channels on the HMP can be linked or tracked. Tracking means that changes made to voltage or current on one channel are applied to one or more other channels. To configure tracking, press the track hard key, select voltage or current, and then select the hard key for the track channels. The keys for the track channels will now be illuminated in blue. Changing the value in one channel will automatically change all the other channels by the same amount. Note that although voltage and current will change by the same amount, the absolute values may be different in each channel. Instead of a constant voltage, the HMP can switch between different discrete voltage levels and current thresholds. This is called an arbitrary waveform. Each voltage slash current pair, or point, has a user-defined value and duration, and the HMP supports up to 255 of these points. Sequences can also be repeated multiple times. Arbitrary waveforms can be created two different ways, either directly on the HMP or externally using the free HM Explorer software. On the next few slides, we'll show you how arbitrary waveforms are created and played directly using the HMP. To configure arbitrary waveforms, press the menu hard key and then choose Arbitrary. There are three steps in using arbitrary waveforms. The first is to edit or recall a waveform. The next step is to transfer the waveform to one or more channels. And the last step is to start or stop the waveform. This can be done directly from the arbitrary menu or by using the channel and output keys as usual. Arbitrary waveforms can be edited on the HMP using Edit Waveform from the arbitrary menu. This brings up the arbitrary editor. For each point or index, values of voltage, current, and duration, or time, are entered. After configuring these for the first point, change the index to move to the second point 
and configure the next set of values. The repetitions count applies to the entire waveform and indicates how many times the waveform should be repeated. Zero means repeat indefinitely. A created, imported, or recalled waveform must then be transferred to the output channel and this is done using Transfer Waveform. Simply select the channel to which the waveform should be transferred. A small icon will appear in the channel display when an arbitrary waveform is loaded. The last step is starting or stopping the waveform. As mentioned earlier, this can be done using Start or Stop Waveform from the arbitrary menu, or by using the channel and output hard keys. The next topic is Remote Sense. The cables connected to a power supply's outputs have resistance, and this will cause a voltage drop between the power supply and the load. In many cases, this very small drop can be ignored, but it can become significant with high currents or small load resistances. Remote Sense is a method used to monitor and compensate for the voltage drop in the supply leads. In Remote Sense, two leads carry the current as normal, but two additional sense leads are used to measure the voltage at the duct. Because these sense leads are connected to a very high impedance in the power supply, there's almost no current flow on these leads, and therefore almost no voltage drop. Based on the readings made using the sense leads, the power supply can adjust the output to obtain the desired voltage at the duct. The sense wires used in remote sense can be connected either on the front of the HMP using the black connectors, or on the rear using the S plus and S minus connectors on the wire block. Note that only one set of sense connections should be used at a time. Remote control and monitoring of the HMP is possible via different remote interfaces, including the standard LAN and USB interfaces, or via optional GPIB or RS-232 interfaces. These remote interfaces enable programmatic control using standard SCIPI formatted commands to both set values as well as to retrieve values. Remote interfaces are configured using Menu Interface. We don't have time in this presentation to cover the details of using and configuring remote control, so please see the HMP documentation for details, application examples, and a complete set of programming commands. Let's end with a brief summary. Roding Schwartz HMP power supplies are available in two, three, and four channel models. All models support 32 volts and either five or 10 amps per channel. Total output power is 188 watts for the HMP 2000 series and 384 watts for the HMP 4000 series. Connections can be made on either the front or the rear of the supply, and the HMP can be operated either through its intuitive front panel interface and or remotely over a variety of different interfaces. In addition, the HMP supports over voltage and over current protection, remote sense for higher accuracy, and arbitrary waveforms. This concludes our presentation, Getting Started with Rodin Schwartz HMP Power Supplies. If you'd like to learn more about the HMP or power supplies in general, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.